bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who guided St. Bridget of Sweden along different paths of life and wondrously taught her the wisdom of the cross as she contemplated the passion of your Son, grant, we pray, that walking worthily in our vocation, we may seek you in all things. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above, or on the earth below, or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished him who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then, either by you or your son or daughter, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, or anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, Lord you, you have, have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, Lord you, you have, have the words, words of, of everlasting life. life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, Lord you, you have, have the words of everlasting life. life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The, nor the ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, Lord you, you have, have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, Lord you, you have, have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Hear the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. 
The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes when explaining to someone the difference between confession and spiritual direction, sometimes at penance services or even on our Saturday confessions, people want to come and talk. And you try to explain that there's a line outside that confession is not spiritual direction. They're both very good and they're both very valid. And usually if you go to spiritual direction, as I do and Father does, uh, uh, usually it will end with confession or even begin with it first. Sometimes uh, the confession is what leads to the discussion the conversation about what's going on in the person's life. But I used to say it this way, that, you know, think of it like the checkout counter at the supermarket. The confessor, you know, the confessor doesn't need to know why you're buying the eggs. They only have to scan the dozen eggs. I don't know if you're making a cake. I don't know if you're making an omelet. I don't know if you're throwing them at someone's house. But whatever it is, like, that's, that's your thing. Con spiritual direction is explaining why you're buying the eggs. Confession is acknowledging our sins without having to explain them and say... This is what I did. I say that because today, you know, we get the explanation in Matthew that began with that parable as Jesus is talking to the people at the Sea of Galilee. And of course, we see right away the intimacy that they have with him that later on we see even those closest to him, the disciples, were able to get a translation, a, an explanation of the parable. In the past, you know, it was a very common rabbinic tool to teach in parables. And the students would have had this kind of discussion with their rabbi. And so he's explaining all the different things that you had heard in there about the seed that fell on good ground, the seed that fell on shallow ground, the seed that fell, but thorns choked it up. Uh, you know, all of these are the seed that burned very quickly uh, because in the sun because it had no roots to draw moisture from. Um, and so with us, it's, it's reflecting on what, you know, making sure that we have good fertile ground, so to speak, when we have our prayer time, our conversation with the Lord, we've got to constantly sort of maintain and make sure that we don't allow ourselves, that we're not too shallow, that we have uh, the potential for the God's word to take heart in us, to have deep roots, to get really at our who we are, that we don't allow the concerns of life to scare us away from drawing deeper to the Lord that we allow ourselves to, to have that time. I mean, what it means is like any gardener, you have to put that little bit of time in each day to go after little weeds when they're small, when they're easily picked out. In our own life, it's uh, determining, you know, coming up with a, with a routine of prayer, of just spending some time each day with the Lord, using the different techniques, uh, different, you know, some people are more to Alexio Divina, let me open up some scripture and let me really delve into it. Some people, it's, you know, the booklets we give or it's the mass, the readings of the day, and I'm going to read those ahead of time and just imagine myself there. Um, others, it's a spiritual book, a guide, you know, quotations from saints, things like that. Whatever it is that helps us to do this, uh, we ask God to, to kind of open our hearts. Uh, St. Bridget of Sweden, we, we honor today, as I said, in the year 2000, along with St. Edith Stein, who was the Carmelite nun who was killed in the Auschwitz concentration camp, along with St. Uh, Catherine of Siena, one of the patronesses of, of Italy, the one who argued with the Pope to get him to return from France back to Rome. Uh, they are considered the co-patronesses uh, of Europe. And so um, it comes to us again from the 1300s, comes to us obviously from Sweden, a uh, wife, a mother, uh, bore eight children, six in the 14th century, this was quite a feat. Six of her eight children survived into adulthood. She would uh, eventually, one of her daughters would become a saint in her own right, St. Catherine of Sweden, uh, will be canonized a saint. Uh, they will do a, a pilgrimage, her and her husband Ulf, uh, to the Holy Land or to Rome, but he will grow he will get ill on the trip he will come back he will um he will die 
Uh, she will raise her children. She'll also uh, draw deeper into a religious life. She becomes a lady-in-waiting in the court of the king and queen of Sweden. She will use her influence there to try to uh, spiritually direct uh, the king. She will um, encourage him to provide for the poor. Uh, she will found a religious community herself, what's called the Order of the Most Holy Savior, uh, today after her death. Of course, it's called the Brigitines. They are very noticeable in the world of religious habits. Uh, they wear what is essentially a white band cross on their um, over the top of their habits with little red spots, the five wounds of Jesus they represent. So you can spot them at a distance. Uh, they have an establishment here in the United States in Connecticut, in Darien, Connecticut. It's a guest house, it's a retreat house. You're going on vacation somewhere along the Long Island Sound. You can stay there. Um, it's a, uh, uh, just a, and she's known especially for the revelations. From a time, it said, for as an early, from her early childhood, she would have visions, revelations of the passion of Jesus. And later on in her life, uh, she puts these down in some the, the prayers of uh, St. Bridget in reflecting on the passion. Uh, for us, it, these books may help us. Uh, maybe one of the things that you turn to as we try to keep our soil fertile so that when the Lord gives us an inspiration or a command or a reflection that we can receive it, not let the world choke it off, not get distracted by it, not get scared by it, uh, that we may always live like St. Bridget did as one who opens her heart to Jesus. Please stand. Trusting in the care of God who protects us and brings us to goodness, we offer these prayers today. For the church, may she grow in holiness and charity in her service to the living and true God, we pray to the Lord. For the world, may God's spirit of truth bring all people to set aside violence and greed and work for the common good, we pray to the Lord. For those who grieve the loss of a loved one, may they find hope in the promise of Christ's resurrection, we pray to the Lord. For those in our faith community who are struggling financially or are unemployed, may they find strength and courage in their faith. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they rest in the eternal light of God's truth. We pray to the Lord. And for the deceased members of the Barron family and for Hannah Gallagher, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer these prayers framed in love and hope for your generous mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. I pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate Blessed Bridget, humbly entreating that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love. 
and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As in exaltation, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints, Saint Bridget, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Turn life to us and receive them. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who travels in search of fine pearls and who on finding one of great price sold everything and bought it. For those watching our mass online, we offer our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of this divine sacrament enlighten and inflame us, almighty God, on this feast day of blessed Bridget of Sweden, that we may be ever fervent with holy desires and abound in good works through Christ our Lord. 
So a reminder that today we have Eucharistic exposition, which will end a bit early tonight instead of 7 o'clock or 10 to 7. Uh, benediction will be at about 20 after 6 because tonight also our monthly festival of praise will begin at 7.30, goes to 9 o'clock. Uh, also check the sign-up sheet. There are still a few spaces left if you're able to commit uh, to adoration time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life.